When you follow a ketogenic lifestyle, the reason it works is because you're shifting your metabolism from burning glucose and sugar as fuel to now burning fat as fuel. So the fats that you eat, you need to eat fats because your this is your body's primary fuel source. If you are one of those people that are just learning about this and have been following a restricted calorie, a low fat diet for an extended period of time, thinking about that shift in your mind of switching to, to eating higher fats can be a little bit scary, you know, because you think you, you've just been taught or have thought that eating low calorie is what you need to do to lose weight and eating low fat is what you need to do to be healthy and, and to lose weight. So the goal of the ketogenic diet is to not be a quick fix, is to not be something that you do short term just to get results fast. The ketogenic diet has incredible studies that prove its effectiveness in reducing body fat, improving health. And I'm going to post actually post a link so you can check out 23 clinical studies that were done that looked at, you know, different studies that took low fat diets and compared them with high fat, low carbohydrate diets and the results both with weight loss and cholesterol and improved health and that sort of thing. So you, the very first thing is you need to be able to make the shift in your mind to get away from the whole low fat, low calorie thing and be able to embrace and understand that by eating healthy fats, your body can effectively burn the stored fat that you have because there is no way you're going to be able to eat more fat than your body burns in a day in calories. When you get started on this type of lifestyle and you shift your eating, and at first you may think it seems impossible to not eat carbs because most likely, if you are like the majority of the people out there in the, the standard American diet, it's carbohydrate heavy. The majority of the foods that you eat are very high in carbohydrates. And even the diet industry, they produce a lot of diet foods that are high in carb carbohydrates, lower in fats. So like, you know, the convenience foods that you may be getting, trying to lose weight, that sort of thing. So you may be looking at the foods that you eat now and think, how in the world am I going to stop eating carbs when that's basically what the majority of what you eat is, right? For breakfast oatmeal, cereals, um, toast, whole wheat toast, all of these things are the majority of, you know, the foods that you eat. And then snacks, you know, even if these, these you're considering these healthy snacks, if you have been trying to lose weight, especially for a long time, and you've been reducing your calories, what happens is your metabolism, your body is not stupid. Your body wants to keep you alive. And so your body says, wait a minute, there's not enough food to, to run on. We need to lower our metabolism so we, the body burns less calories per day in order to survive. So by cutting your calories, cutting your fat, you, can, you will lose weight in the beginning, but then as time goes on, your body lowers that metabolism so you're going to, you're, you're going to need to eat less and less to lose weight and then by the time you reach your goal, your body is going to be at a very low metabolic state. So if you eat something higher in calories, it's very easy to gain that weight back and it's very difficult to stay at your goal if you are following a low calorie, low fat type of meal plan, okay? So this is where ketogenic comes in and really has changed people's lives because with ketogenic, for your body to be burning fat as its fuel, not carbohydrates, because this is the thing. With carbohydrates, carbohydrates are very easily accessible to your body. When you eat them, you can burn them quickly, and it doesn't take that many calories to burn them. With fat, it takes, it's, I like to compare it to like carbohydrates being money that's in your wallet and fats being money that's in the bank. It's harder to access fats in the bank. If you have carbohydrates, if you eat carbohydrates, you have glucose in your system, your body's going to burn that first. And any 
anything you don't burn, like if you eat a big carbohydrate meal or just carbohydrates all throughout the day, you go in an excess of calories. Like let's say your body, you've been dieting for a while and you you your body burns 1400 calories for the day, but you ate 2000 calories. Those excess calories through carbohydrates are then stored as fat. And so your body's going to be using the glucose, the carbohydrates that you have in your system to burn as you eat it and not access, it's gonna be holding on to the fat because your body thinks you are in starvation when you start cutting calories. But with ketogenic, you're now transitioning your body to, to, to having like an overwhelming supply of calories and fat. So your body's no longer gonna hold on to it thinking it's starving. It's going to change your metabolic rate, increase it so that over time, as you're following the ketogenic meal plan, you can consume more calories and still lose weight because it takes more calories for your body to burn fat as fuel than it does to burn carbohydrates as fuel, which is very efficient at doing with carbohydrates. So our ancestors survived and lived off of burning fat for fuel as they, you know, hunted through the jungle and everything. That was their primary fuel source. And they were in great shape. And um, just over time with our agriculture, creating breads, creating pastas, all of these man-made things, wheat and gluten, carbohydrates are, like they, those attract water. So one thing you're going to notice when you completely eliminate carbohydrates at first. And I strongly suggest when you do this, that you take the carbohydrates completely out and you start right away at your, uh, unless you have a specific situation where you have diabetes or on insulin, something like that, where you need to come down slower. For the, nor the average person who is just wants to lose weight, get healthy, what you wanna do is you wanna basically take your carbohydrates that you're eating now, you probably have no idea how many you eat, but you, what you're going to do is you're going to cut down the carbohydrates dramatically. You're not going to be counting calories. You don't wanna be trying to stay within a low calorie amount, especially at the beginning, because your body is just shifting from from into this new metabolism. So you can eat, and we want you to eat a lot more calories in the beginning, the first couple weeks while your body begins becoming fat adapted, it's called. And the really cool thing is once you transition to this new metabolism, your body starts running really, really efficiently. You're gonna have more focus, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna sleep better. There's, there's a ton of benefits, you're gonna have a better sex drive, like I don't know, there's so many things that having a diet high in carbohydrates, really it affects our hormones in so many different ways. So there are a ton of benefits to this. So you're first beginning this, the very first week your body's gonna be transitioning, you're gonna be shifting your fuel totally around, you're gonna be not worried about your calories, you're going to be eating filling food, maybe for the first time in a long time without having to feel guilty and you're gonna be losing weight pretty quickly at first because your body's going to be flushing out all of the water that it's been holding by having all of these carbohydrates in your system. You're going to notice you'll in your face is going to thin out quickly because of all of that bloat will be gone. The first week there's something called a keto flu because what happens is as your body releases all of this water that's been, you know, stored in inflammation, you know, if you have arthritis, if you have swollen finger, fingers, feet, anything, so any type of, if you have painful menstrual cycles, like that is a very big sign of inflammation. And that is one thing for me when I got started on this, I totally, I used to have the most painful periods ever. And then I started on this and that was gone because the inflammation is totally gone. It's one amazing benefit, okay? And so the foods you're going to be eating are amazing. So this does not feel like a diet because these foods are satisfying foods. You're gonna be full for a long period of time because you're not going to be depriving yourself of anything. 
If you are hungry, you eat. This, the, one of the incredible things about this is that you can actually learn how to listen to your body. And because in the past with carbohydrates, with sugar, you eat a meal, your insulin spikes. Then when your insulin spikes, your insulin crashes and your body wants to get to this level here. So you spiked and then you crashed and now it wants to, it needs to get back up. And the only way it knows how to get back up is by sending signals saying, we need to eat more. We need sugar. We need insulin. We need to get back up here. And so you, so you think you're hungry. You need to eat. That's where binge eating comes in. That's where a lot of struggles with food comes in. That's where not knowing if you're really hungry because your body needs fuel or if you're eating emotionally. Um, and so when you are eating a ketogenic lifestyle, your blood sugar is now an even level. There is no dips. There is no jumps in your insulin. And so you're, you are going to then not be feeling cravings for food, not having an energy crash in the middle of the afternoon. You are going to feel great the first week though, because you may have been following, you may have been eating, you know, high car, uh, carbohydrates for years. This may have been your diet forever. This may be the first time you ever tried it. And look at me, I'm suffering. Oh my gosh, I was at the beach yesterday. Um, so your metabolism has been running on glucose and carbohydrates for a long time. And now all of a sudden you're changing that. And so your body is going to push back a little bit and it's going to be confused because now all of a sudden the carbs are gone and your body has to figure out how to change the fuel source. And what it does is it shifts into burning, learning how to burn fat. And so you need to be eating a lot of fat, especially in the beginning, a lot of calories, especially in the beginning, as you're trying to change your body's metabolism and increase your metabolism. So your body says, wow, there's a lot of food. We're not going to hold on to this stored fat, which we are saving for this starvation because we've been starved for so long going on all of these diets, yo-yo diets. We're going to release this fat, but as you release it in, very, in the very beginning, you lose a lot of water at first. And so you lose a lot of sodium. You lose a lot of the salt that is in the water that your body has stored. And so when that happens, it can give you headaches. It can make you tired. It can make you feel like this is the first week I'm talking about. They call it a keto flu. So it is kind of like you have the flu. When I first did this, I had it for like three or four days. And it wasn't so bad that I was like dying. I wasn't. That is the one time when people usually give up because they're not, they don't know how to handle that. And the way that you do is through making sure that for one, you're taking a multivitamin every day. You need electrolytes. So you need to be getting enough salt. So the ketogenic diet is higher in sodium than the traditional American diet or any type of low fat, low calorie diet. There's more sodium in there, which is good. But at the very beginning, when your body is totally flushing out a lot of this liquid, you need to replenish the electrolytes, which is sodium salt and magnesium and potassium. So you want to be salting your food. I suggest you use Himalayan pink salt because that has minerals in it. So that's the best type of salt to use. And you want to also be taking a magnesium supplement. About 250 milligrams is good enough. And I suggest you take your magnesium at night. And I can post links for this, um, the ones that I used. So you want 250 milligrams of magnesium. And I want you guys to take that at night before before you go to bed, right before you go to bed. I take my multivitamin and my magnesium at night and there's a reason for that. It's because you want to get that magnesium to help you sleep. Because a lot of times in the very beginning especially, you can have sleep um, issues because your body all of a sudden will have all of this energy that it's not used to. And so you might wake up at like three in the morning and then feel like you're ready to go for the day. By having your magnesium at night, cuts that off completely because that was happening to me. I was waking up at like three in the morning, every single morning, like, uh, okay, I'm ready. And I started like working out really early at like four 30 in the morning. And then I'm like, okay, I need to change this because this isn't working. <laughs> so <laughs> the magnesium will totally, I just, I just shifted from when I was taking my magnesium. So I started taking it at night and that 
helped me completely. So do that, okay? And then potassium, you want to be eating foods very high in potassium at first. And, and the way that you do this is through avocados. Avocados are incredibly high in potassium. Bananas are out the window because those are too high in carbs, too high in sugar. A lot of fruits you will not be eating anymore. There are, in this I'm telling you, until you reach your goal. And then you will introduce back in more fruits, you know, because a lot of people think that fruits are healthy for them. And yes, fruits do have a lot of vitamins, but fruits are going to like spike your insulin, blood sugar. Fruit is basically nature's candy. And you should think of it like, okay, I'm going to stop eating fruits because it's very high in sugar and sugar, sugar is a big part of the problem. And so what you do is you can have berries. So like strawberries are very low in net carbs. I suggest that you go for like about 30 net carbs or less, 30 net would be the goal, unless you have some situation where you have diabetes, you're working with a doctor and you have a different um, goal, which is totally possible. Just the average, if you're just a regular healthy person, just trying to lose weight, then that will work out for you, okay? 30 net carbs. So fruits, you know, for potassium, you wanna get it from avocado because, because avocado, yes, it's a fruit, but it's very high in fat and that's approved and that is good and it's very high in potassium. So while you are in this beginning stage transitioning your body to burning fat for fuel, you need the potassium to help you, okay? And so avocados, I add avocados to every single meal. You can have avocados with sour cream and cheddar cheese and, you, and chicken. You can make like a whole like Mexican skillet. Amazing, um, beef, you know, Regular beef is great. Ground beef, look for a higher fat beef. This is a total shift in your mindset because you are now looking for foods that are high in fat because your body needs that fat for the fuel that it needs to survive and to, and to feed your brain. What happens when you get started on a ketogenic meal plan is that your body starts burning fat for fuel, it produces something called a ketone and your brain uses ketones to run off of, okay? And so you actually can test ketones in your system to see to make sure that your body is burning fat for fuel and it can take up to three or four days after you get started on changing your, your lifestyle um, to get into ketosis. So the drugstore, Amazon sells little keto sticks that you can get to test and you just pee on it and it changes color if there are ketones present in your system telling you that you were in ketosis. Those are unreliable the longer you are following this because eventually your body becomes very efficient at using ketones for fuel for your brain. So you may be in ketosis later on. So if you've been doing this for two or three months and you test and it shows negative, that doesn't mean it's negative. That just, you could have been in ketosis for a very long time, but it's just not showing up on your strip because your body adapts to it, okay? So don't use those strips maybe in the beginning as you're learning how to do this and figuring it out. So uh, someone just asked about what about fresh lemons in water? And yes, lemon is fine if you just add a little juice in, in, you know, in your water, but you, you need to make sure you count it. There are a ton of amazing apps out there to count. You get the idea of this, that your body is now going to be burning fat for fuel, so you have to eat fat. So don't be afraid of fat. Don't think that fat's going to give you high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, it's going to ha impact your health in any of these ways because what is going on is that is absolutely true. It would if you were eating high carbohydrates along with the fat. The key here is you're getting rid of the carbohydrates. So your body is, when you eat the fat, your body is burning the fat. It's not going to be storing the fat unless you are eating a ridiculous amount of food, which is basically impossible because this type of food that you eat is going to be extremely filling. It's going to keep you full for a while. And so I want to talk to you guys before I end this live about intermittent fasting. Do not start intermittent fasting until your body is fat adapted, which takes a couple weeks. It's okay if you want to try it, but it's going to make it hard for you guys if you're in the keto flu state and your body is just barely getting into learning how 
use fat for fuel. And so then if you start intermittent fasting at the same time, your body still has the glucose in the system because it still has to burn through that. It's stored. You know, the, the glucose is, is basically on, in a holding cell. That's why it can take three days to get into ketosis and start burning fat for fuel because it has to burn through all of those carbs you already ate that it has sitting there waiting to, to burn out, okay? So you're going to be hungry, that means, and you're going to have those insulin spikes still, but you're going to be you're probably going to be at a low, low state at, at the beginning. So we, we don't want you guys starting intermittent fasting until, until you're at least like two weeks in or a weekend and you're feeling good and you're out of the keto flu state and um, you are not hungry because this is how it works. You listen to your body and you follow what your body tells you. If you are hungry, you eat. If you are not hungry, that is one of the benefits of following a ketogenic meal plan. And what you do is you listen to your body. And a lot of people are not hungry in the morning. They wake up and they're not hungry. They're sat they're, they're still satisfied from their meal from the night before. And so they, they say, okay, today I'm gonna do an intermittent fast. Like today, I have not had anything to eat yet today. I have not had anything to eat yet, but I, that's because I'm not hungry. So I'm listening to my body and I'm just going for the intermittent fast. And when an intermittent fast is basically an eight hour window where you eat all of your food. So you're not eating less food. You're just eating the same amount of food within an eight hour window. And so most people do that, like for me, my last meal ends at 8 p.m. and then my next meal is the next day at noon. And at noon, I have my first meal and then I have three meals a day. And then you try not to snack in between because snacking, and you may have heard that you're supposed to eat every two hours. That is if you are on a glucose burning metabolism where your body is going through those dips. And so when you have to eat every two hours, what they're trying to do is keep you stable enough so that you don't go down to then binge eat, okay? But with this, it's not going to happen because your blood sugar is going to consistently stay stable. So it's really important that you don't cheat. It's really important that you um, know what you're doing before you begin. It's really important that you get through the first week where it may be really difficult, make sure you have your supplements. Intermittent fasting, like I said, guys, wait until you're totally fat adapted to start that. Don't push it, don't force it. But the first three days you try it, you will probably be a little bit hungry after, like right around this time, because your body is still so used to eating the moment you wake up. And so you just have to tell your body signals that food is coming, but it's coming a little later. And when, like for me, it was probably like the first two days and then I totally stopped being hungry until noon. And if I do wake up and I'm hungry, I will, I will just eat. Like I don't, you don't have to be all in or all out. It doesn't have to be like you have to intermittent fast every single day to get, see the benefits or the progress of this. Intermittent fasting is so amazing because when you give your body a break, from, from eating food, from digesting food, it uses its energy to repair and heal your cells. So if it's not busy working, trying to figure out what to do with everything that you eat, it is now focusing in on your body and, and rejuvenating you. I noticed a huge difference in my like loose skin from pregnancy. It started tightening up because as you're losing the fat and your body is the, you know, your body will, will naturally start tightening this loose skin, especially when you do intermittent fasting with that. So that's the real reason that I do it is to lose that loose skin so I, I don't have to have like a tummy tuck or anything, you know? I don't have to have surgery and that's one really cool thing, but it also helps you with weight loss because it's going to kickstart your, your weight loss because you're not gonna be, you're gonna go a long stretch without eating so your body is now burning the fat that you have stored during that time. There is no fat holding, you know, after you eat. It, you are going to be burning it. You're gonna be burning the fat that you eat. You can do a fasted workout if you want. So if you wake up in the morning, you can have your pre-workout. The only thing that breaks your fast is if you eat more than uh, about 50 calories within your fasted window. So there's no food, but you can have tea, you can have broth, especially, you know, if you're trying to do this when you're in the keto flu situation. So that is basically, a breakdown of, of what it is and how it works. And a lot of people think like, wow, you don't eat and like you don't have breakfast and doesn't that hurt you? But like, don't they say like you need breakfast to lose weight? Absolutely not when you are on a fat burning metabolism with 
a ketogenic lifestyle. If you are eating low calorie, however, low fat, that can make you hungry or later in the day and you'll end up binge eating, you'll end up eating more, that sort of thing. For me personally, some people will do like a keto coffee, which is like a bulletproof coffee, and they will have, which it's, it's like grass-fed butter and some stevia in their coffee, and they blend it, and it makes it into a latte. It's really creamy. It's incredible. It's so good. And, you know, just hearing about this, you probably think it's nuts because who puts butter in their coffee? But it's not like an oily butter. It turns into a latte. It's so good. And it helps you get more fats in your day for your body to transition to burning fat. But in, in the beginning, when you start learning about um, intermittent fasting and start adding that in, you could around this time, the 1030 window, have one of those type of coffees, which are higher in calories. It will break you out of your fast. However, um, it, it's, it's all made mostly fat, so your body is going to use that as fuel, and it's going to help you maybe prolong the time when you have like your first full meal, okay? But when you get going with intermittent fasting, you want to have your, if you do the bulletproof thing, you want to do that after your fasting window ends. But you know, there's a lot of different studies on different things. This is just my suggestion. You can do it um, however you personally want, but I know once you get the digestion going, then that's when your body starts using the, the foods you eat then and it's not doing what it needs to do to heal your body, okay? Please feel free to ask any questions below. Have an awesome day.